And we're live. Boom. Live, just like that. I tell you. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the middle of the week, so let's screw around and not do any work if you're at work. If you're not at work, quit doing what you're doing. And just yeah, hey, take it. Come hang out with us. <laughs> Aw, hi, lovely Arthurin. <laughs> Hello, Arthurin. That is together. We do have a bit of a show for everyone. The holidays are... Mm -hmm. What's the next holiday coming up for people? That's a good question. I guess it would be Easter. Easter? <laughs> yeah. We were but just looking Sunday, at... So. Um, <laughs> retro battle stations on Reddit. Oh, there's a rat shack. Check that out. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Uh, it's it's hoarding. That's yes. it. <laughs> and um, I have one of those. Look right at all the max. <laughs> Especially when you have like two. The apple of, twos in right. this case. Yeah. But, okay, you have uh, Windows XP. Yes, vintage on a Dell. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Motorola 68. Board needs cleaning. You know what? I'm down with it. I mm -hmm. I like that society has progressed to the point to where it's okay to public. Well, you know, there's places where people can publicly appreciate each other's sickness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the internet's a big old um, enablement circle. <laughs> Let's call it that, because it's Wednesday. Well, it used yes. to be one of those things. You know, it'd be one or two people in the neighborhood, and, you know, sometimes they might not even get along, or they'd be jelly of each other. But now, mm -hmm. you get this over-amplification of things. You're like, if you... By the way, if you haven't figured this out, kids, internet's not reality. <laughs> because you get that over-amplification of, of like, some of us would wish it to right. be, it isn't. Right. <laughs> Yeah, Raspberry Bird. Um, there are projects online of people who have done that. Um, I've thought about it myself. <laughs> Let's see. If I was going to put a Raspberry Pi in a Mac, uh, get tape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's a way you can, you know, hook it up to the CRT. I've seen um, Reddits well, on that and people doing that. HDMI to VGA adapter. Yeah. <laughs> or you take out the CRT. Yeah. You get a nice four by three flat panel, mm -hmm. put it they, right up yeah, against the end. People have done that too. Wow, that's and then good. just uh, have a bunch of space. <laughs> but the problem is the Pi can't. There, there's an issue with the Pi um, uh, running the Apple CRTs because they take up too much power. So you have to add an extra battery and do I all this. I would probably keep stuff. the power supply that came with the <laughs> Mac in there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Definitely. power the CRT now. I don't think it'll be the CRT. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Hello, Shay and Sorceress. Let's get that TikTok going. And. Oh, okay. I think I'm going to go use the restroom while I, while I have a working toilet. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> so so you just bring it the might bucket explode in, again. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> bring the bucket again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Let's go. Oh. Yeah. I've been on the look for a Mackie Control Universal, Pedro. As you know. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> Pedro pays no attention during the pre-show on Saturdays when we were on eBay researching them between U.S. and Canada. Oh, that's what you guys were looking at. No, I knew you guys were looking at something. It's just like, hey. That guy, <laughs> I, I, I found a spot on the wall to look at, and it's a little distracted. <laughs> a little bit. I knew you guys were doing something, but that spot on the wall, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> spot on the wall, Discord. Yeah. <laughs> This is a 19-year-old piece of equipment. There's a... People are trying to get 400. I've been following it now for... We're rolling into like two weeks. It is that perfect thing on eBay where it's the same ones. Relisted. Re at what point does it sink in? Sink in. Maybe you at home can answer this. That maybe we're all pricing it together at the same price and no one's selling. Mm-hmm. 
And you can actually see which ones have sold if you go on eBay and mm -hmm. you hit the completed listings. And then you see, oh, look, it, uh, one sold for, oh, half the price I had mine listed at. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, with eBay, like a lot of things, there's, there's a difference between somebody wanting to sell something and somebody trying to turn a profit. Mm -hmm. Which there is a profit to be made with these, as I've done deep dive research into this piece of equipment. Because, you know, they're 19 years old. They're electronic devices. They have motorized faders on them, jock wheels, circuitry boards, partially British made. Um, <laughs> so they need servicing. Uh, so even the rubber has got rust on it. It's got issues, man. Um, <laughs> I've already watched all the YouTube videos about doing the recaps for the motorized faders. I'm like, yeah, it's doable. And it's a couple of cents. And I understand. But what I'm talking about is like this little thing over here. It, it, it's a control surface. But it's got a jog dial and a bunch of other wheels that are driving me crazy not having. And <clears throat> they're made out of steel. Because I'm a 20-year-old. And I'm trying to find one, like, for 200 bucks that works. I even went to Reverb.com. This is another place to find things. But people on Reverb are dodgy. <laughs> with the descriptions, man. There's this one for like 160 bucks. And all it says is, I mean, cosmetically, it's immaculate. And mm -hmm. he's like, well, Fader 1 has had issues in the past. And I messaged the dude. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, just issues. <laughs> Does it jolt up to 100% just because? <laughs> Each Peter has its own plugged-in module that's got to be controlled. Like this one does. This gets very expensive. I paid $180 for this um, X-Touch comp. The faders for this thing are $100 a piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nine faders on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, I don't know. I think eBay is starting to figure me out because they showed me it's like, you might be interested in a Behringer Q802. Eight input, two bus, no beds. Ends um, Q802. I have to go look. I'm a curious person. Yeah. It's like, oh. Okay, Q802, it's got uh, preamps, it's got, uh, right, cool. Uh, oh, how much? USB. Let me look it up. Yep, USB. Yeah, that, that's the USB version of what I sent to Canada for Jordan. That's my. That's the original mixer that I started all this with. Cool. Yeah, no, the base bidding starts at 20, so it's like, all right, I'll give you 20 for it. <laughs> So. We'll find out on. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out on uh, Friday if I got it or not. <laughs> I got a bid in right now. That I know I'm not going to get, but I, I'm like mm -hmm. three days into the false hope process. Because <laughs> no one else has bid yet. Oh, but no, then again, no, everyone they, bids they in have. like the last hour. They have, but the, <laughs> the amount that this thing would cost versus I'm still very much in the mood of like, I got to buy myself something. So, yep. and I've already given them, like, I'm going to buy something for the show anyway. And, and just, so I'm like, you know what? I can put some money in on this. So I, I put a bid in to establish dominance to hopefully that any elk, one oaks that tries to bid increment by like 20 or 30 bucks will go, okay, fine. Before yep. it gets <laughs> to that. But I'm not going to mention what it is because it's important enough to where I don't want to um, jinx it. <laughs> And also, even if I do manage to bid it, I'm going to probably wait a week before I even announce that I have it to hopefully stave off the meteorite that's going to hit me if I get it. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Yeah, no, Hi, that was, that's like my stupid expense uh, for the month, unless something else shows up on eBay. Oh, you do it monthly. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't, I couldn't come up with something every month to buy. 
<laughs> no, I go on eBay. It's like, all right, let's find something to buy this month. It's like, oh, a mixer for 20 pounds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Right on. <laughs> I'm not good with that. I did... Again, I don't like having like things like if I needed a mixer, that'd make perfect sense. Bon. No. Oh. Thank you, Sorcerer So, for the, the tweet. I just retweeted it. <laughs> Yeah, we can see that. Mm -hmm. Yes. See this up on screen, <laughs> Oh, okay. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, of you, nice, of you, nice of you to take a break from the phone, as we like to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw, I, I yeah, <laughs> okay. Kids these days, always on the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Pedro called me a millennial. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you, you're going to have to apply for a millennial card because uh, you don't yeah. let go of that phone, ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the... Yeah, no. See, I don't even bring my tablets in here with me. I have a tablet on this desk to switch. That's it, period, because I'd be messing with it. Be like, oh, oh, I need to check this thing. That's one thing is... Because usually when I'm walking somewhere, I'm walking with a purpose, so I don't look at my phone, I'm just walking to the thing. Mm -hmm. But as I'm walking and I get to see everyone else, everyone is on their phones. It's usually zero as I walk out, at least it's been for these past couple of days. Like, mm. zero Celsius outside. Bunch of people just on their phones, like, freezing and then having to hold, like, their hands <laughs> oh, under their geez. armpits to warm them up. It's like... Just oh put your goodness. hands in your pockets. People are... <laughs> well, that, that's why you get... This. Uh, our Darren. <laughs> you get the capacity of gloves that you threw on the desk like a week ago. <laughs> Clearly get a lot of use out of. Uh, <laughs> but um, people have been... I mean, you're old enough to remember mm -hmm. the time before the oh, cybernetic thank you, our extensions Darren. with poor bandwidth called mobiles came out. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk to each other then. We just stared at the floor when we were walking. Like, oh. Yep. We might say like, hey, or nice day, or something like that. <laughs> mm, people were forced to do it. But now, now you have that little distractotron where it's socially acceptable to be. <laughs> and it's always the people who lack the ability to multitask are hooked into it the hardest. Yeah, like uh, me going around in Tesco is just going, okay, I need this, this, this. I go specifically to the places and then I have to stop because a lady pushing a trolley full of stuff is mm -hmm. on her phone and walking very slowly. <laughs> it's like, all right. True all right. story. I wear steel toed <laughs> boots to the grocery just because I don't like getting my shoes run over. Yeah. And how you don't see me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, this is true. No, I'm very polite and respectful. When I'm out in public, I I'm not on my phone when I'm walking. If I need to to use it, I you know pull over, sit down on a seat. I, We're about I to find out if task. that's true or not, Steve Chapman. <laughs> Steve's gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't have somebody that could just straight up narc on me in chat. Be like, oh yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I carry around an LTE connected tablet. I do not carry around a mobile. Like, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not my jam. A Nokia. Why don't you make yeah. a new phone? <laughs> I do have a Nokia smartphone. It's my mm. work phone. Oh, right, right. <laughs> it's the Nokia 7.1, which is an amazing phone, by the way, and it was one of the first, uh, like, third-party phones to have Android 10 support. And desktop mode, it works. Janky as all hell, but it works. <laughs> the um, Let's see what... Oh, the <laughs> Motorola... I think it's Motorola G... The first Android. I've kept that. Just because I was like, ah, it's neat, it's got a keyboard. I guarantee you it doesn't power auto work, but... 
Yeah, probably. <laughs> that thing was rough, man. Android, Android one point nine. That one was a growing experience. Found yeah. that Note eight, yeah. like up when it got to Gingerbread uh, two point three. It's like, oh, here we go. This is a smartphone now. That was the point where I switched from um, the iPhone three that I had to Android. Um, I think I really got back into Android and paid attention um, when Honeycomb came out. Oh, five. Yeah, because that was the, the tablet. <laughs> oh, no, Honeycomb was three. Yeah. I yeah. have the tablet that Honeycomb shipped on. The yeah. one. The one. Yeah, my brother has one, that one, too. <laughs> it's also the first tablet that did uh, 1080p out. Of HDMI. Yep. Mm. My first uh, Android phone had an HDMI... Um, port mm -hmm. right next to the power port and this they look not... very similar so many times oh, yeah. i plugged oh, yeah. <laughs> plug the micro usb it's like why is this not oh there we go <laughs> the it was an alcatel <laughs> yeah raspberry bird that's yeah, not the something you see on the tablets anymore <laughs> is micro hdmi out that used to be a standard feature. yeah that used to be a thing yeah both the shields have the have them, yeah. Now you can airplay. Yep. <laughs> Which is real handy. Not really. ASOP? I have no idea, man. I'm running like Lineage 12 and Lineage 14, man. I got tablets. They just got a boot. Can you Netflix? Can you Amazon? Can you get to Google Docs? We're good. Yep. Can you send push notifications? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Someone was working because the 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 one official uh, developer for Lineage OS for the Nvidia Shield kind of said, "Nope, I'm done." Mm. And so there's a couple of uh, fifteen like Lineage fifteen um, ROMs on XDA. I, I was reading through it. Uh, some people were saying, "So when's what are you gonna do to sixteen? It's like I haven't even managed to make the camera work on fifteen yet. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that, man. Oh, yeah, we'll get going in two minutes. Okay. Yeah, no, I, much like you, Raspberry Burb, I've got my eye on that Pine phone. <laughs> it looks like a phone, and it, mm -hmm. it's running Linux. <laughs> Uh, you can be one of the, um, my favorite type of person on the internet who's perpetually waiting. This, this breed of individual is most common among video card buyers. <laughs> around and I'm like, yeah, 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 I see that that just came out, but I'm going to, I'm going to see what's coming out. You know, the next gym, like, what are you running? And they're like, uh, 4,500. 50. Right. <laughs> 10 year old video. Like, just get out of this conversation, man. I know you want to participate, but don't. <laughs> Honestly, as someone who now has a very, very old Pascal video card, yeah, no, the 2000 series isn't speaking to me at all. Maybe the 3000s NVIDIA cards will have something to say. Maybe the big Navis will be, oh, look, we defeated the uh, 2080 Ti and it's not stupidly priced. It's always good to drive the price down, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when they rolled out the 2060, I, I, I don't know who they were really targeting, but it's like, <laughs> I sent a letter to Santa. <laughs> and they read my checklist. I'm like, oh, well, let's make a card just for old men, then. Here's a 2060. Like, thank you. Ordered it day one, got up, like, the minute that went live. It's a perfect card if you're into um, streaming, video editing, and um, yeah, it's got RTX course, whatever. If you care about that, don't buy this. <laughs> Two of them, but yes. Right. <laughs> like, I would be perfectly happy with the 2060 Super just because I want more memory. Mm -hmm. Dave was like, 
yeah, it's like I gotta buy a new video card, but he had a 1060. So mm -hmm. It's just going for the 2060. It doesn't look. Ah, fuck. This is get the 2060. 2080. Ooh, okay. Yes, I, I can't. I did that. Like, the, that's yeah. a 500 pound video card, yeah. there, David. Don't care. Buying it. <laughs> you, you just gotta get in that headspace. I mean, there's a reason there's a 980 sitting in our audio box doing nothing, nothing plugged into it. I had that moment. I know those feels. Like, you know what? Just. Uh. Yeah. And um, I was playing around. I've been using your face to uh, train the uh, DaVinci Resolve's neural AI. Video. Yeah, I saw the the lines. <laughs> it, it's, it's more of a challenge because you wear glasses. I could do a show without glasses. No, no, no. I, I'm <laughs> teaching it. <laughs> All right. It, it's just the staggering amount of irresponsible stuff I can get away now with. Like, <laughs> once I have that tracked properly, and then I'm like, what? I have like 20 options. I can genuinely apply makeup. <laughs> like, mm, I can thin your lips, baby. Or I can plump them up. <laughs> it's got sliders for this. I can facetune video. I suppose that's how they do it li on live television. All right. <laughs> it's, uh. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll see what I get away with. Um, <laughs> just keep your eyes open. Um, Arthur, and that's something that Nori's already asked a couple of times. It's like, if I did a video like one of those makeup videos and I used you as mm -hmm. the face that I was doing the makeup on, would you be okay with that? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. As long as you don't have to shave. <laughs> yeah, as long as I don't have to shave. <laughs> And she's got to apply the makeup with an airsoft rifle. <laughs> uh, paid ball from, you know, point blank. <laughs> I'll show her how to freeze them for the appropriate time where they don't do permanent damage. <laughs> don't forget Pedro Swole. All right. Um... Swollen Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I haven't been to the gym in many, many years, so I, I looked into I have using the furthest a away from swole I could possibly ever get. <laughs> yeah, man, I did, but um pro tip for anybody, if you're doing um video production, recording, editing, and all that, just get an NVIDIA card under Linux. There there's like no discussion to be had. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That NV encoder is very, very nice. It's not even it's just the compatibility with um, And the CUDA. It's, it's CUDA. You're going to be dealing with Blender, 3D modeling, DaVinci. DaVinci's like, yo, I want CUDA. Yeah, I, I can open, CUDA. use mm -hmm. OpenCL, but I'm not going to be happy about it. <laughs> and I'm probably not going to work. And if I do work, it's only going to be in this hacked up version of CentOS 7 provided by Blackmagic that you actually have to burn to a DVD to install it. Not making any of this up. <laughs> I had a couple of those images at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I tried all the different ways to get them to boot off of a USB. Wasn't having any of it. <laughs> That's uh, something I look forward to AMD bringing some genuine competition into. Because yeah, um, uh... compute NVIDIA just Hello, dominates Scott. that. Oh, hi, Scott. Did Scott come to gloat about his racing abilities? How did Scott do in grip? Scott did all right. Uh, he won a couple of rounds. I won a couple of rounds. There were a couple of other people winning. So, yeah. <laughs> Just trying to remember back to how much smack was talked. Oh, <laughs> Not much. <laughs> I didn't talk any because it's like, oh, it's literally the first time I'm actually playing the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Literally, all I did was I started it, went into the tutorial, it's like, okay, it's working. Cool. <laughs> right. Uh... 
I remember holding back my kernel many, many times because of FGLRX. I was ah. thinking about upgrading to um five five, but I'm five four. I'm living that five Debian. four is the one to be at. Yeah. I'm running Debian, man. Come on, of course I'm on five four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. Running Debian, I file my own kernels. Deal with it, noobs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I mentioned this on Discord, but Glorious Eggroll, the person who's been doing, like, the side proton thing, he has two copper repos available uh, from the listing on Fedora. One has Mesa with, uh, built with ACO enabled, Mesa 20, and the other one is for the kernel with, like, all of the gaming optimizations. All of them. It's like, huh, look at you, Fedora. <laughs> yeah. Very true, Arthur. And glorious egg roll is just glorious. Yay! Yep. <laughs> you gonna wake up, Jean? Yeah. <laughs> no sleep last <laughs> night. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. We locked and loaded, so let's hook that and get the recording going. All right. Seems legit, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Let's take that midweek break. And uh, hey, I'm in the right spot in the show notes. Power. Oh, the power went out Friday. Didn't no one noticed? That was fun. Our multiple APC systems kicked in, is what I'm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, like, why'd that light go Very out? Good. Then you run the. I mean, it just blinked. It came right back. Yeah. On, it just... went out for me when I was on with the. Uh, uh, Linux unplugged and I didn't even know it. So, cause you know, I'm in my room and everything's lit up with my APC and, <laughs> and then about 20 minutes in everything <laughs> turned off. I'm like, what? Didn't <laughs> I didn't even know it. I had not even noticed. <laughs> and welcome back to Linux weekly daily Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun, Hello. fantastic things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm old man Vin here, switching the bits, doing the nightmare stuff, all under Linux, like my co-host, Jill Bryant in <laughs> LA, where things yeah. are a little splody, but the man oh, yes. <laughs> who likes the man who stares at walls on Pedro Mateus from the Isles of Britannia. Oh. Look at him. That's, That's beautiful. Wall. <laughs> yes, you do, Pedro. Dude, okay, I, I can joke. <laughs> the reason I make that joke is I remember in university finding like a good acoustical tile to zone out on because guess what? We didn't have Wi-Fi. Oh, <laughs> we yeah. had to do something listening to boring lectures to where they you get class credit for being there. I was like, that's a cool one. Hey, everyone. How's it going? We got another fun show for you this week. Um, everyone joining live. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, what's new with everyone? Pedro, you got new toys. I saw these. You were posting yeah. in our Discord. You're like, hey, look, I got a thing. <laughs> this is a very powerful toy, about 400 watts worth of power that it can handle anyway. It basically takes whatever you feed it up to 400 watts. It's an HD Plex 400W. It's, yeah, does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a DC to DC power supply converter stabilizer whatever you want to call it and this is what you put inside a computer with very limited space like a certain steam box that i may be working on and then you have a power brick like one of the big chunky dell laptop power bricks and yeah that that's what drives this and the one chunky um dell power brick that i had that could actually mm. power everything that's in the steam box right now the connector is a little bit too thick mm. with two C's. Uh, so, yeah, no, I'm going to have to find another uh, one. <laughs> Jill, anything exciting uh, happened to you lately <laughs> that you can think of? Oh, God. So last night I had a bit of, of a house plumbing emergency. Uh, we had a blockage, which, uh, and we have three bathrooms, and two of the toilets literally had water leaking from out from under them. So it was so powerful that <laughs> it made two toilets uh, literally kind of explode <laughs> so <laughs> but but emergency is over for now we've got a temporary fix right now until we get uh, uh, our last uh, galvanized pipe from under the house 
So that was a thing. Uh, <laughs> sad that you're going to have to let go of those vintage pipes. I, I know you yes. like collecting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Retro Turn them into pillars for the living room. <laughs> yeah. Good. So I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you got that fixed. Speaking of vintage gear, yeah. man, I've been on the hunt for a Mackie Control Universal, which is like a 20 year old uh... piece of equipment. It's an interface with a jog dial on it and a couple of extra buttons. If anyone sees one laying around with somebody looking to get rid of that, because I'm going to have to recap the thing. I already know this. Call me. And because uh, <laughs> everyone on eBay is like, I want $400. And I've been watching for it for two weeks. And those same six have been reposted twice because no yep. one's paying 400 bucks <laughs> for a first gen, a 2001 Mac Control Universal. Yeah. <laughs> so I will be perpetually patient waiting on that. So I can do some more fancy editing with audio and stuff. But let's get right into it this week. Because uh, we talked about the Pine Phone. I think uh, everyone's like, yo, man, that thing is cheap enough. I'm going to pick one up. It looks like a fun little Tegan toy. But yeah. then again, the internet had to say something. Yes, yeah. this is the internet. So not everyone was on board with that. And there were a lot of misconceptions floating around. And uh, Lucas Erisinski was uh, very keen to address those, and he put out a post that's like, okay, I take no pleasure in this blog post. Even as I'm writing these words, I am intentionally torn on whether this is the right approach to addressing the problem on hand. And basically, uh, people, or some people, were starting the rumors that, oh, uh, it's using a lot of um, blobs and a lot of closed source, so it's not actually an open phone. And he took issue with that, obviously. I mean, it's the Pine phone. If, if you have a look at what Pine does, it's like, really? Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. they break it down. It's like, okay, let's start with the all-winner A64 SoC, which is the, the brains, the uh, the big CPU, GPU, everything that's uh, that drives the phone. That is compatible. It's all open. That's all there. Linux 5.6, the upcoming kernel release, will contain um, drivers for just about everything that's in the SoC, so that's not even an issue. So the blobs, most of them, obviously, are where uh, exactly where you expect them to be. They're in the Wi-Fi, uh, wi the Bluetooth, wi and the camera. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and of course, the LTE modem. Mm -hmm. That goes without saying. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, those four places, which is exactly where the blobs are everywhere else as well. So it, yeah, it, it's a lot to do about nothing. I understand. Yeah. I mean, because it's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, that firmware, it's got to be loaded into that real tech um, during initial, initialization of the system. This has got to happen. But, but. There is no RAM or flash storage shared between those systems. So I mean, that's the yes. cleanest way you're going to be able to pull it off. Yeah. Is this a, outside of just being the internet, to put a finer tip on it, is this the uh, the attack of the privacy hobbyist that I love ever much? I mean, yeah. he does, like, that's where he ends the blog post. It's like, I don't want to start a conspiracy theory, but he's very clearly into Do it I, something. So man. there's like, is this Librem <laughs> or the people who funded yeah. the Librem who now don't feel terribly <laughs> secure in their decision and are trying to uh, make the competition look worse. Well, you know you know what they could do with the Pine phone that'd make everyone happy? What if they put hardware dip switches on the back to disable they these components? Did. Oh, wait, yeah. that's right. Yes, <laughs> for security. They, they yeah, actually and, yeah, this is so true. And I was so happy he wrote this article because I've actually been reading a lot of articles that, that state that the phone is closed source. And, and of course, knew better than that. Just a few proprietary blobs where you have to have proprietary, but that's it. And, you know, like Pedro was saying, the LTE modem, which runs it, the LTE E modem it has to be closed, uh, but it runs its own black box Linux system, and um, that has proprietary blogs in it. But of course it does, because it's a cellular radio, and they need that for security. So, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Still going to get one. I mean, they're cheap. Yeah. It's something to play with. <laughs> and it's awesome. <laughs> have fun with stuff like this. Just be glad it exists. Don't start picking yeah. it apart because you Nip spent like a thousand dollars and something you might not have gotten yet um <laughs> yes very good man <laughs> linux kernel 5.5 is here with better Yay! hardware support 
so Linux kernel 5.5 kleptomaniac. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, kleptomaniac. You butchered that hard, <laughs> <I did>. man. <laughs> <laughs> kleptomaniac <laughs> octopus. Um, and as Ben has said, has has been released with better hardware support, including um, the ext4 file system now supports encryption on file systems where the block size is less than the page size and gains direct input output via IO map. And for hardware, AMD overdrive overclocking support via command line is also added for Linux gamers using Navi GPUs. Yay! I'm gonna be getting one of those soon. <laughs> and I was really happy about this for those of us who have older Logitech hardware. Um, your Logitech G15 gaming keyboard with the built-in LCD screen will work on Linux. Oh, I remember being oh, so jelly because the Windows users. I wanted one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah and the I wanted users... one of those back in the day because it had the LCDs. <laughs> what type of nerd device be that? <laughs> Yeah. Imagine well, like a little control station <laughs> style keyboard right, with yeah. all of the macro keys, all of the media keys, and an LCD display that shows like CPU load and RAM. Yeah, all the and... temps and yeah, yeah. your hardware. And oh, I, used to I be wanted jelly. one of those so bad. Yeah, so I used to be so jealous Mine looks of like all the something Windows out of Battlestar users. Galactica, so whatevs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually do have to look on eBay for one of those, see if I can get one on the cheap, because... Yeah. Apparently you can no, address you those with the one. now. <laughs> no, both of you like obnoxiously clicky keyboards. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, I like That's the linear keyboard. actuation of the Cherry MX Reds. Mm -hmm. It's a membrane, but it's one of the best membrane. It was before the mechanical <laughs> keyboards. Oh, came I back love it. Into... It's, it's clearly <laughs> not a mechanical keyboard, but I can excuse that. Squish, yeah. squish, 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 squish. I mean, it's I didn't one of mind the membrane keyboard I had before this one, but this one yeah. is, feels so much better for that typing. That is absolutely pretty cool. A couple of new things that we got <laughs> rolling awesome. in with 5.5 is Raspberry Pi 4 support, and, and I don't know if this is something, information that I personally want to know, but an <laughs> NVMe temperature driver, which I just assume my NVMe, because I have two NVMe drives <laughs> in yeah. this Threadripper, and I'm getting ready to put another one in there. I, so where does it read from? The controller or the flash? It, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe it uses like... Because <laughs> you kind of want the controller to be nice and chill, but the flash to be nice and warm. <laughs> you do. It's got to be in its optimal state. But as long as yeah. it runs, I don't ever want to be like, oh, right, I want to get you at just the perfect temperature. I, I was happy when we were finally able to retrieve smart data from them without having to... <laughs> Compile a custom stuff because that that was a thing back in the day. Good on them, uh, Pedro. Your favorite distribution has got an update. Soul is four point one. Yay! Fortitude, <laughs> it's out. You know it. You love it. We've talked about it several times in this show. The one I took away from this was like, wait a minute, look at that. It's got eSync support, Pedro. What's eSync support? Mm -hmm. This sounds like Moon technology. So Async, uh, you may be well aware of it without even knowing it, which is the thing that Proton uses mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. create a different job on a different thread whenever a program asks for a new job. So basically, it allows for multi-threading where multi-threading wasn't possible before, and it runs into a bit of a snag on Linux by default because most distros have a very low no-op uh, hardware limit set, like in the case of Solus, while I was using it, the default uh, hardware limit was 4096. That's not mm. enough. That's not enough for an indie game. Once you get to the AAA games, yeah, you got hundreds of thousands of the things. But they actually took a tip from uh, Strider, from Lutris, yeah. and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. uh, Lutris is setting this to uh, 655,000, so we're going to set it to 655,000 as well. So, very good job. <laughs> Couple of things in this. Mm -hmm. um, Cloudflare DNS is now used as fallback, secondary to Google. Nice. And that's pretty good. I use Cloudflare for everything simply because it's 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. That's easy to remember. <laughs> and <laughs> FFmpeg 422. So it's got all the latest bits and bobs in that, which I am very pleased. Very pleased with. Uh, what does this mm -hmm. thing use to boot, Pedro? You were talking about this 
in the yeah. yeah. pre-show. Because uh, it's one of the bits that uh, Jill had in the show notes. It's like, mm-hmm. Solus doesn't use Grub. It uses the uh, CLR boot manager, which is the Clear Linux boot manager. Yay. And mm-hmm. what it does, it's just a very teeny tiny shim that handles the transition between the UEFI shell and systemd boot. That's it. Hmm. That's all it uses to boot. That's it. <laughs> Wizardry. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, there's also, um, you know, um, in- improvements to system D, speaking of booting, which include future improvements to Solus around EFI support. So, yeah, like Pedro was saying, there were issues with dual booting uh, Solus with other operating systems, such as Ubuntu, be- because Grub didn't exist and those those flags weren't <clears throat> set. So, but it's easy to fix. And uh, Solus also ships with Linux kernel 5.4.12, which includes hardware support for newer AMD RX GPUs, such as the 5700 and the 5700 XT. And there's also support for AMD Ryzen third gen processors, new Intel Comet Lake and Ice Lake CPUs, as well as newer NVIDIA GPUs, such as the RTX 2080 Ti. And it definitely has much faster much faster installation i installed it yesterday and it, it i mean it always was pretty fast installer but it's even faster now no it's fantastic and... for distro hoppers <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> for, or, or us, us testers and reviewers yes so and this is due to the new z standard compression for the squash fs images which is really cool so it's the first distro it to use it makes that. the image itself a bit bit just a little bit bigger Mm. But yeah. it's much faster to uh, decompress yeah. and less compression. Solus, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Solus again is a rolling release. So if you're already yes. running Solus, chances are you're already <laughs> using the latest version and you already have everything that we just talked about. So yeah, the updates <laughs> are already inside the house. Canonical's been up to yep. something though, man. I'm like, what, what's mm-hmm. going on here? Yes. Yeah. So this is this is actually really cool. This is exciting. Um, Canonical has announced the first commercially available mobile cloud computing platform. It is called Anbox Cloud and is an Android-based scalable operating system. It allows apps to be streamed to any operating system or form factor and can be used for enterprise workspace applications, cloud gaming, software testing, and mobile device virtualization. And this is really, really cool. You know, this is what Canonical has been working on all this time. I've been hearing about the secret project. So the Anbox Cloud is the next step into a software as a service cloud computing model. And we become closer to just needing a web browser to access our apps. In fact, in the article, Jack M. Germain states, graphical output is streamed back to the client via WebRTC. Direct access through a web browser makes it possible to deliver Android applications to any device that can run a browser. Oh, so yeah, we're living that's in that how world. they're gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> and yeah, you know, pretty soon all our devices will just be thin clients, even our mobile phones. So yeah. Didn't Android have um? <laughs> what, what version did web app? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Where it only downloads like effectively the front end of the app. Yeah, it's literally the shortcut that launches a Chrome window. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it was version? one of the earlier ones, but yeah. Android WebView has been around for a long time. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's kind of a thing. That's kind of neat, but that's going to also be heavy, heavily reliant on the deployment of 5G. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other nice thing I mean, about this is security, because a lot of people are, you know, so they don't have to use do it through Google. They can do it with through Canonical and feel more comfortable with it for more security reasons. I so mean, there's, that's... It, it's still an Android <laughs> app that you're streaming to your device, but... Yes. Yeah. It's going to be an Android <laughs> app hosted on Amazon Instant somewhere. I mean, right. It, it, yeah. It's whoever's nameplate's on the front of it. But, hey, the technology is interesting. Mm. You know, we, yeah. we're seeing everything getting pushed down, you know, to... The much loved, the universally praised uh, Google Stadia. Yes. Everyone's mm-hmm. joyous about that. 
<laughs> yes, joy. Joy. That's a word you can use. That's lovely. <laughs> it's cute, man. It's the only gaming service that you put a pat on the head. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're redeemed, Epic Game Store. No, you're not. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, speaking of good news, or, you know, sarcastically good news, uh, QT is offering changes for 2020. Yeah. Yeah, so yes. uh, Arthur and brought this up uh, <laughs> earlier in the week, and they're at it again, because this is not the first time that Drave tried to do this, and if you remember last time, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. The installation of Qt binaries will require a Qt account. Long-term support releases and the offline installer will become available to commercial licensees only. New Qt offering uh, <laughs> for startups for small businesses will cost 500 bucks a year. And then they go on to say that we are making this change to encourage open source users to quickly adopt new versions. If you run that to DBSO Tron, uh, you get, we want the open source community to literally become our unpaid beta testers, again, and we will hold the stable releases behind the paywall hostage because we can. So, yeah, no, something told me that when this story first came up, this wasn't going to end terribly well, and if you go look on Twitter about this issue, it didn't. Okay. And uh, mm. it, 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 went, it got to the point that they even went back, and the post uh, that they released as an apology last time that they tried this, they deleted it. At one point, <laughs> it was deleted long enough that the Google cache managed to grab it and the Internet Archive managed to grab it. So it was gone, and then it was reinstated when people realized, wait a second, why did you delete last time apology post? And then they reinstated it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and so for $4.99... 499 uh, US dollars a year, you can get the startup small business edition of QT, which has all the benefits of a commercial license. Well, if the cost of QT and loss of features is too great for an open source project, they can switch to the open source framework of GTK, which is a bit problematic for, of course, KDE projects. <laughs> nah. But the option is there. <laughs> T TK. Well, let's go back to WX yeah. widgets. Um, <laughs> yes, let's use the Kinter again. Yes. <laughs> we can break that up. And so according to the QT company, it is making changes to encourage open source users to quickly adopt new versions. Um, verbatim what they wrote. A general QT account, it's going to be needed to download the binary packages. So yeah. let's make a point. The source packages will still stay available to and everyone. And to that mm. point, the distro packages are based on the open source packages. Mm -hmm. So those are mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> we're not saying everyone don't panic we're just saying don't panic yet that that's effectively the official statement from kde it's like don't panic mm -hmm. yeah hold off on that yeah. uh qt i did a little research on that they started to stroll tech if you remember from billions of years ago mm -hmm. when i first started um using linux when this rolled around there was the big fight of, I, you know, I don't use KDE because it's based on QT, which was an open source, and he had GTK, and the GNOME people, I was KDE um, zealot way back in those days. But um, Trolltech uh, started in 95, was acquired by Nokia in 2008, then sold to Digia in 2011, 2012, then demerged and from Digia in 2016. So... It, I can't fault them for trying to turn a profit. You know, they're going to make money. So. Mm -hmm. But there are better ways to do it than they, to treat the open source community like. Yeah. They're, they're going to have to work on yeah. it. They're going to have to get the pricing better because they were talking about like $100,000 if it's a small business. That That's uh, two developers that know anything you're looking at. That's putting you mm -hmm. over the $100,000 mark right there per year. And no, as a lot of people have seen, you can't simply fork software at this level of complexity. You don't just walk in and be like, well, it's an entire do... framework. Yeah. It's yeah. not uh -huh. feasible. <laughs> it's not a widget set anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was interesting. I don't like seeing stuff like that because I've never been involved in a situation like this, but I've been in some stuff that is just going to create unneeded headaches for a lot of projects. And it always makes me a little sad because I know people are going to be have, dealing with this instead of working on projects. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Good times. Sad. Definitely not had by all. Bit of good news, though. But, yes, in Yay. actual actual good news, uh, yes. Thunder Chicken, <laughs> or Thunderbird, as you may know it, or if you are to take the internet meme database at its word nowadays, it's Thunderburb. Uh, the... The all-loved uh, Linux uh, Mozilla-developed mail client is getting its own subsidiary of Mozilla. They're calling it the MZLA. Uh, the MZLA um, Technologies Corporation will be in charge of Thunderbird. And they say that the amount of um, donations ha has grown. And not only Yay. donations, but also staff and aspirations, like people working there. They've got some goals now, and they actually have a little bit of money to work with, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very glad to hear that uh, Thunder Chicken is growing into <laughs> a um, nice, juicy something that will end up on a pan late. Now I'm hungry. Aww. Why did I do that to myself? I'm glad to see the goodness <laughs> come from it, because for a minute there, especially at the beginning of early last year, I'm like, what's going to happen with this? Because... Yeah. yeah. Mozilla's like, not ours. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we don't want to touch it. And the Document Foundation went, uh, we don't want to touch it either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, and... the people working at the Thunderbird were like, yeah, we're, we're not touching it. So um, that was a joke. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, this, this is such wonderful news because, you know, I was worried about Thunderbird, you know, especially since the layoffs that Mozilla recently had. You know, even though, of course, Thunderbird, you know, had had one on its own, but it's still very concerning what's what's going on with uh, Firefox and Thunderbird. So I was so happy to hear this, that they have some funding and go out, everyone, and, and donate to the project. If that, you use it, kick them really a few helps. shekels. That's, um, yeah, you we know, use I, it here at Linux Gamecast. <laughs> I can say from personal experience, going from like a solely one person funded with every bit of spare money I had to having, you know, Crowdfunding is just yep. boom, night and day yep. difference in the quality <laughs> and everything that they can push out. And that's yes. one of the first programs I install because mm -hmm. I manage six email accounts. Yeah. Email doesn't, yeah, yeah webmail, that doesn't fly in this particular situation. <laughs> um, Check this out. Terminal-based CPU stress test and monitoring mm -hmm. utility. What about HTOP? This is better than HTOP, kind yeah. of, in a little bit. <laughs> Um, it does more things, yes. It monitors yes. CPU temps, frequency, power, and utilization with a big, fancy, graphical, blinky, come on, kids, you're going to love this. Hang on, let me get down to this. Oh, get the end curses going. Oh, look yeah. at it. It's glorious. <laughs> it it blinks. It, it looks like the Moon Knights got a little <laughs> too much alcohol in them, and they tried to do a show. But no X is required for this, so you can run this completely headless. And best of all, it has several built-in options for stress testing a CPU. Do a little um, burn-in. I mean, you have a couple of modes just for your standard monitoring. Then they have another package that you can throw in. I, this is probably already in your distribution. Go check that out. Don't do it's a pseudo pip, pip install. Repo, so yeah, you can, don't. Yeah, if you have the, Python, oh, yeah. just use pip. <laughs> don't. Uh, yeah, well, I have an older version of it installed on Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with not pip install this application in particular, it's like, oh, I, w I want to install this uh, 267k application. That'll be six gigs of depths. <laughs> pip is I not guess. as bad as NPM, okay? Yes, <laughs> as. true that. Okay, 4.5. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, actually, pip is one of the ones I don't mind at all. And yeah, if you just want to have a look through a bunch of really useful Python applications, fire up pip. And yeah, STUI is, I wish they'd have um, something that could load up RAM, like actually hammer on the RAM and see if anything shook loose, oh, especially yeah. if you're testing memory timing. I have a uh, dirt bike nice. that'll do that. <laughs> yes, definitely. I don't want it to be, you know, full past, you know, to the point of it's hitting the hard drive now. I just want it something that'll hit like all of the sticks to actually test to see if they're working and if something shakes loose. Because That'd be interesting. We, been, we should call yeah. it uh, MemTest. I think that's a pretty awesome thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you could use MemTest, but that one takes a while. <laughs> yes, it I want does. something that's a, a bit time. faster we, in we getting need to the heavy stuff. Slightly less accurate. No, I want something that gets to the heavy stuff faster. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, one of the great features of STUI is that when a certain threshold is exceeded, you can have it run a, sh a shell script for greater monitoring capabilities. And that's mm. really, really, really awesome. Um, and I actually just recently installed a new uh, GUI stress tester called GTK stress testing a few days ago, which is very similar. Um, but it actually even has some more features than STUI does. But it's very, very similar. Oh, yeah. And it runs great too. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to murderate a CPU, <laughs> rise and kill, <laughs> except no substitute. That was the, um, uh, the initial like Ryzen 7 1700s that had a bug in them. I have one of those behind me. Still works. It only does that if you force it, you know, if you get like 18 instances of GCC compiling. That'll take it down. What's yeah. up next? Oh, right. The <laughs> fantasy segment. Of our yes. show. <laughs> well, we don't have a Microsoft loves Linux, but we have the uh, free yeah. software foundation. You, you, loves you know what Windows? you say that you say that yeah. you say that <laughs> there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, Satya yes. Nadella. Despite yes. you having nothing to do with this, <laughs> totes your fault, man. Um, Microsoft support. This is uh, from the free software. Foundation, you know, I'm F -F -S -F. it's yes. over, you know, Windows 7 support. We talked about that a couple of weeks back, um, but it's life doesn't have to end, to which I say, nay, it does. Give me the stakes. <laughs> We're going to hammer this one in. Uh, we yep. call on Microsoft to upcycle it, hippies. Um, instead, upcycle Windows 7. Current signatures uh, probably make more sense if I have scripting enable. Let's take two on that. Uh, 11,270. <laughs> so... On January 14th. Okay, that we have some demands to the executives yeah. at Microsoft. <laughs> Allow me. We demand that Windows 7 be released as free software. Its life doesn't have to end. Yes, it does. Give it to the community to study, modify, and share. Okay, I'm kind of behind that. We urge you to respect freedom and privacy of your users, not simply let people take strong arm them <laughs> into the newest yes. Windows version. Hey man, Microsoft go to Microsoft, okay? To Microsoft's credit, they're just trying to get people to update on something that they can force updates to. Um, which, you know, when it comes down to overall security and the average Windows user, it's good that somebody does that for them. We want more proof that you really respect users. This is not a joke. And user freedom. It's getting kind yeah. of funny, though. And aren't <laughs> using those concepts as marketing when convenient. No, not Microsoft. I mean, no, dude, Microsoft. Uh, why would they? Dude, uh, <laughs> Look, yeah. does does that look like somebody <laughs> that would ever use that for Mark? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Maybe not, not his precursor, the Palmer no. himself. But uh... they want seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven <laughs> supporters to sign up for this. We've got eleven thousand two hundred and seventy. I'm gonna be hundred percent honest with you. Online internet petitions don't do. But hey, man, I like the gesture. And yes. let's be honest, alphabet agencies from around the world would never allow that to happen because your operating system is most certainly <laughs> backdoored, but we both know that. I'm just talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, this would be wonderful. I mean, Sasha Nutella from Microsoft has said, you know, that he doesn't care about the desktop anymore anyways. So, <laughs> so Desktops just, in the just cloud. release them all open source. Yes, yeah, all he counts is cloud. Yeah. <laughs> that is where the business is but yeah no yeah. by all means keep the back doors proprietary keep everything that you reused in windows 10 yeah. proprietary release everything else mm -mm. Just, mm -hmm. yeah just release everything else that's don't, it yeah don't do it man don't do it microsoft <laughs> keep that shame hidden <laughs> the hacks on hacks <laughs> i mean at that point it will be very likely to be nothing because most of it was yeah. reused for Windows 8 and then Windows 10 after that. But something. The, 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 the best something. way to make sure people don't lock in to Windows 7 is not to give them an open source version of it because that's exactly what <laughs> That happen. keeps getting updated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, good point. Good point. It's like, I will not upgrade with prejudice. I mean, there's somebody out there in Windows XP laughing at all of, Windows XP laughing at all of us right now. Mm -hmm. and, mm, that's the thing hey beautiful people we need to thank all the people that make this show possible uh yeah. you're one of those crazy crazy folks uh patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast that lets us do all this 
five days a week, commercial free. We bring it to you. No tracking, no ads, none of that fun stuff. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Get some cool stuff in return. At least I think it's cool. Go check it out for yourself. We got merch. We got PayPal, Libra Pay if you're into that. Magic internet money via Bitcoin. Fair warning, we will spend that. That time we don't hold. <laughs> and uh, wish zones because yeah. a lot of people over the years have like gave us like the Game Shark to help cheat and um, get stuff earlier than we normally would. And uh, but Jill's got one just for pink equipment. It doesn't yeah. improve anything. It's like, look, <laughs> I got <a> thing. Oh, <laughs> so no, but your reward is, awesome. is her making that horrifying noise. Yeah. <laughs> so Arthur, yes, gifted me a pink gaming mouse from my Amazon wish list. Thank you so much, Arthur. And now my mouse matches my pink mechanical keyboard that's in front of me that's glowing pink and my pink computer case. So <laughs> pink all the things. I'd show you my keyboard, but I might uh uh harm the mic in the process <laughs> i want to thank all the beautiful pretty people on frank's fine up sandy cannibal wall we got carl mike g and i see i can't pick a right color we need more so it goes lower and basil <laughs> that that wall of shame is if you accidentally mess up and get anything off the studio wish someone and put me to work but yeah. you don't even want to look at that thing right now because <laughs> i had some pricey pricey nachos um <laughs> it is we're getting into the hard stuff okay Shameless self-promotion is over. Let's get <laughs> into a slice of pie. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. That's Aww, like some 3D nice rendered it. diabetes. That's that's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> so this is uh, this is awesome. This is terminal pie. This is inspired by the Matrix and similar to the Reviser version one Cyberdeck we talked about a few weeks ago. This is called the ARM ARM terminal a cyber deck for your desk. And this is a really cool project. Uh, Jay Dosher, um, who created it, loved the look and idea of a floating terminal and says that many of us already have monitors on arms instead of just sitting on the desk. So why not an arm mounted cyber deck like the matrix? <laughs> and this is a really cool project because it's also 3D printed. Uh, just like the homebrew revisor we talked about a few weeks ago. And he's he's released the STLA, STLA files. And um, actually, some of the components can be purchased from him, or you can print them out. And he, he goes into a, a thorough list of uh, all the parts needed and how he created it. It's really, really cool. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I'm looking at that, and I'm like re-watching the uh the movie series where they just yank on one of those monitors and bring it to them and then push it away yes. it's like yeah if i did that with one of those arms and we have yeah. some of those arms at work yes. i mm -hmm. would rip that arm right off the desk <laughs> the amazon basics arm. i think anybody of a certain age you know we saw the matrix and we're like oh yep want that at some point in my life and turned into a little goal to have that many as I sit surrounded genuinely by almost that many <laughs> monitors. Um, I even have them on the desk. It, no, just just rock that dual screen lifestyle. You'll be a much happier individual. This, Aww. this may be for some live monitoring because I see they have a yeah. little EQ a... there in the bottom. Like maybe you could play yeah. around with that. Um, and th that's definitely cheaper than some of the kit from Black Magic. So <laughs> yes, just buy a bit and buy probably a magnitude of a thousand dollars. Um, Cool. Mm -hmm. I love seeing stuff like that. But yeah. if you got something cool, mm -hmm. you want to tell us about it. Uh, you know what? Don't go to Google and search for a mixer that Pedro is currently bidding on eBay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> currently, I'm still the only one bidding on it. So shh. Shh. <laughs> tap that contact button, fam, so we get them digits. What do they say to us, Pedro? Well, you could say basically anything you want uh, if you have a question uh, or some bit of feedback or literally anything that you think is a value add or a value detraction from uh Linux weekly daily wednesdays you can just go to the contact page and uh, fill out the form lwdw is the show you want to send your feedback to Yay. otherwise we will be happy to take your hate mail for that saturday show or ask jordan about relationship advice or there are other things in there 
We don't Possibly. talk about those things. I don't know, man. <laughs> We're going to have to reboot you after the show. We've almost got yeah. all the bugs worked out of this one. It, it, it gets a little oh. robotic, but a little bit. Beautiful people. Thank you so much for making this possible. Come check us out tomorrow. We're going to be back to Jordan with some nightmare fuel. I don't know what he's doing Thursday. Probably more Vermintide. Friday night foobar. We're doing the end of the month Yay! Jackbox attack party pack. So if you watch this long, there's your special invite. Hit me up in Discord. We uh, usually have about six to yeah, yeah. Six open <laughs> slots available if you want to put your video face on the internet, or if you just want to hop in audio only, or if you just want to do audience participation, come check that out. It's going to be at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. But mm -hmm. let's roll some credits and oh. see your names in line. That, that oh. sounds so dangerous. Thank you, Artharon, again for my pink mechanical gaming mouse. Well, it's not mechanical, but <laughs> so, that would be Does my it have keyboard. A ball. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Mechanical gaming mice. Did you hear that, Corsair? Get on it. <laughs> oh, oh man, God. the mouse ball is coming back. You know, oh, no. you know that's happening. That's happening, yes. <laughs> mouse, what do you mean it's coming back? I have a brand new one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, actually a cupboard in the basement at work that has a box filled with mouse balls. No one knows yes. why it's still there, but it still is. That's just yeah. a case hoarding problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still have lots of mice with mouse balls. All my originals, because those... Yeah. I actually didn't mind the mouse ball. <laughs> 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 yes, you do, ball. Ben. Yes, you do. <laughs> Trackball. <laughs> the bulliest of mice. Man, yes. <laughs> they don't even sell this outside of Japan, so deal with it, hipsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get that. And... Cool. Now I need to export all the things. Mm -hmm. I know it's hilarious, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Linux Nero, around these parts, we define great as in passable. <laughs> <laughs> As in, it didn't great. No, to find great, what <laughs> Linux you think about it? It's like the best you could possibly do by like a factor of like, I don't know, 27. No. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Raspberry Pi Bird. That was sweet. <laughs> then that would be Pedro on an off day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ven got the reverse ball mouse. <laughs> hmm? Katana says Ven got the reverse ball mouse. That's that's appropriate, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well I don't get things because I like how they look or I even particularly want to use them. <laughs> yeah, <but>. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> this is A yeah, very, no, the, the... very good device for mm. multiple things. This this is kind of some yeah. of the things you can program into so... an eight button mouse that I did a video on it, go watch it. That you just can't get away with it with a regular mouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I still want to get you know, Linux to allow you to say save those mappings to the mouse firmware if the mouse happens to support it, which would be great. Just, 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 just get, say it. Get your, mm -hmm. get your window manager to launch. And... Yeah, you can launch it, the thing as like, you boot. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you set it up once, you never see it. But yeah, if you happen to yank the mouse and take it with you somewhere else, then it's like, oh, it doesn't remember. Oh. You got other problems if you do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm I, just I, saying, this Roquette mouse, it remembers. No matter where I plug it to, it remembers. <laughs> All that does is piss somebody off. Then no one touches my mouse. <laughs> yeah. 
I could have custom. Like once mm. I figured out how to turn the touch oh, uh, the, the big ball, the glowing red orb, into a three D uh, scroll wheel, it's like, yep, done. I thought clicky scroll wheel was the best thing in the world. If you have a recent like Logitech G series mouse, you know about clicky scroll wheel, where it takes the clutch <laughs> yeah. off of it and it's a I metal wheel, that. so you can zzz. twenty times better than that. Is I might have one of those coming my way. One of what? Just because <laughs> someone at work is trying to get rid of their uh, Logitech G903, and oh, they nice. say they'd sell it for fifty. G903. So like, yeah. Dude, I don't. It's the. It's the one hundred and forty dollar one. Of what? Currently. What does it do? What is it? Logitech. I don't know model numbers of mouse, man. Logitech G903. That doesn't help me at all. It, you could have said purple it, monkey dishwasher. I'm like, the, okay. Is it's it? got the wheel, it's got the tons of buttons, and it's uh, completely symmetrical. It doesn't have, like, the stupid ergonomics. Okay, so it's just regular mouse. Got it. Yes, but $140 mouse. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'll try to get rid of it. It's like 50 It's like, is it in good shape? Almost new? All right. I'll buy it off of you. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be back in the office on Friday, so we'll see. <laughs> Let's have a look. Well, that one. <laughs> Gaming mouse. Yes. Uh, what do we need? We need new open box for parts. That's usually where I hang out. Um, 35 bucks. All right. 30 bucks. 20, 30. Oh, look, there's somebody <laughs> with a carrying case. <laughs> that only looks like... 30% spaceship, so that's not too bad. I was looking for a ball mouse that was pink. Because I, I actually have a yellow ball mouse, and I have a penguin ball mouse from the 90s. <laughs> um, if... I mean, just take it apart and spray paint it, man. Yeah, that's a thing, too. <laughs> I've done that on my computers, yes. Yeah, I'm <laughs> saying that's like... A, do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hand out trophies for that. I think, yeah, just pull it apart, spray it, put some clear coat on it. Done. Problem solved. Even better than that, you yeah, can have you really a want Steve Husband coat. professionally. <laughs> professionally. I, I have a um, my uh, Pentium Pro, Pro uh, dual processor computer in the corner. You can't see it from here. But it was one of the full tower uh, black computers and every five and a quarter bay is a different color of the color wheel including my zip drive which is purple okay I, I can this... overlook that so was yeah. there anything good about and the, it and the cd bomb, uh, CD -bomb. <laughs> used to call some, we call them cd bombs back in the day the cd roms uh my uh cd bomb is uh i think green yeah it's green and um had those professionally painted and then steven you know painted them for me and put clear coat on them and this is Years before there were iMacs, before there were colored computers, I was case modding. <laughs> so, and I wanted it to look like the color wheel. It's really pretty. I'll have to show oh. you a picture of it. <laughs> and that was my render workstation for many, many years. <laughs> See, I don't do that stuff to business computers. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make mine look different and pretty. I was surrounded by artists. So that was a thing. <laughs> you had to. See, that, that's, that's the fallacy. <laughs> well, it's... It's because I wanted to, because I liked case that, modding and I wanted something unique and different. That's that, just That's different the way than I had to. I don't want beige. I didn't want beige. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> that's why I spray painted my case, man. I dremeled yeah. out the sides, neoprened it, put it in, put cathode ray tubes in there. LEDs didn't exist back then. <laughs> I had a black light, man. <laughs> it's a fluorescent bulb. Well, like... <laughs> that was the only way to get oh. it in there, man, because I had to put a voltage <laughs> inverter in there and wire that. Yeah, Raspberry Bird. I have an external Bernelli, the the blue one. Um, I have that one, and I also had. Oh, I also um, painted my my SideQuest drive. One of my SideQuest drives. I had several of those. I had the the SCSI, the parallel port, the Tappy. I had every variation on that. Did you put them different my... colors for the different failure models that they had? No. <laughs> I, you know, SideQuest draw, I have never had one fail on me. My SideQuest are still running fine. I've, you know, of course, years ago backed them up, but they're still working. All of them. 
He's very careful with those. Mm. Um, yeah, I got caught up actually... with the um, class action lawsuit for the entire failed run that they made. Yeah, where they I know. Were giving I, people I... money back. Well, you know, I had always bought the very first, um, the first uh, version when they came out. So it was always usually the second or third variations that had issues. And we used to actually, um, uh, before CD CD bombs, <laughs> CD bombs, we used to send side quests in the mail in the animation studios. That was a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, then CDs came around and DVDs. We did that, and now we just do hard drives, and now we have internet. So, <laughs> well, Sequest had um, I mean, they go way way back. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about consumer gear, man. Like Sequest oh, has yeah. got um, sort of I have the big ones. stuff, like yeah. the old uh, 40, 40 meg packs. Yep, I have those. I have the Easy Drive is the one that kind of caught on for a while. So I have quite a few of those but i have the the larger eight inch ones the smaller five inch ones yeah i've got all those things. i i have a lot of uh our um my student artwork on those <laughs> but they still run fine because they're just little hard drives little portable hard drives they're platters and they they're little platters they're so cute the biggest problem people would have with them is when we you'd send them in the mail, they get electrified. <laughs> so, so you had to, you know, pack them nicely and put them on an anti-static bag. And some people didn't do that, and then you get a bad one. I've mm. gotten a few bad ones from one of the studios, and I'm like, you need to put it in an anti-static bag and put it in, a, you know, bubble wrap. And <laughs> are there? I, an, I wasn't looking for <laughs> one. eBay just went. Oh, you seem to be looking at a lot of uh, music stuff or audio stuff lately. Here. Oh, that mm -hmm. that's only 20 pounds. All right. Sometimes it'll get right on that. A lot of times it doesn't. <laughs> it's like, hey, it, it really, eBay's been trying to get me to get into fashion, pick up a new handbag, apparently. That's oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no, my Amazon suggestions, Nora uses my Amazon account too, so it's like, nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I go look and it's like, oh, yeah, look at all the clothing. No. Yeah, no, that feels Pedro. Me and Steve husband do the same thing. <laughs> so I get all his model recommendations for model yeah, kits, and he gets um, all my computer and and clothes. It's okay because Nori's a student, so I get Prime at half off. So yeah, I'll take it. That's nice. <laughs> oh, cool Raspberry Bird. That's a good thing to buy for those of us who still have lots of vinyl. I I have quite a few record players. <laughs> But if you don't have one, or don't have vinyl, <laughs> a bit of licorice pizza. <laughs> yeah, 150. Yeah, you can get a decent one at that price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get a USB one, a halfway decent one for, you know, 50 to 100 bucks now. Yeah, see, I need a USB connected wax cylinder. Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> I, I that would be awesome. I don't listen to that newfangled vinyl <laughs> i still have one like album on a cylinder smoothness yeah. fidelity of wax cylinder <laughs> wax cylinders and metal paddles ding yeah. ding 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 those are ding. so cool <laughs> i do i still have one of those in my collection um man people are still they're genuinely pushing out tape now that's uh it's like ah, oh, that's something. Yeah, that's, I know. That's like then it got it's gotten some traction, man. I mean, there's actually yeah, services that will put your albums on tape. Yeah. It's like, All right, fine. We move past <laughs> that. Come on. No, nah, man. I I want the authentic hiss <laughs> of an undoubtedly corrected. Yeah. Like cheap hundred pound phone off eBay it has thirty two gigs of internal storage and supports SD cards up to like. A terabyte you don't need cassettes anymore yeah yeah no yeah, dude. <laughs> listen man i i like the mechanical feel of the click clicks. i i bet i actually got a you can get them cheap now a, a drive bay for cassettes so i can um digitize them all it's really convenient <laughs> You just stick it in and it'll do it like at, at four speed, you know, <laughs> so... I yeah, that's something I I've never personally understood, in, like, with records, especially with records. Like, I want to digitize my record collection. Yeah. Like, it's going to sound like butt. 
Yeah, you agree. that's. <laughs> it's like well, every we used to... crack, every pop, it's going to be there. Well, I don't digitally. Well, it, it's not yeah. even that. You're not recording at the fidelity. Requi- I mean, the digital masters, the original masters, have been remastered. They've been pressed. Exactly. You can get a pristine digital copy of it. Everyone's like. But CDs sound the first ones did, man. For about the first seven yeah. years, mastering on CDs They're was amazing. pretty bad. They yeah. were horrible. Mm-hmm. They were way over compressed. All uh, yeah. CD audio. I mean, everything was like ah, the mixing. It was just poorly done. Yeah, most of it was pretty pretty bad. Krautrock was done beautifully because those guys knew how to do it right. We're talking um, about people stuff people listen to though, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the uh, craft craft work numbers is one of the most beautifully mastered um cds ever made and it's yeah, one it's, of the old ipods with the hard drives in them yeah, yeah. hey man firewire <laughs> this show is brought to you by firewire i mean our yeah. channel interface comes over firewire um 400 so so steve and i have um our most important because uh, we have literally over a thousand um, We're all familiar with, with your disease. It's okay. Yes. Well, when I did a radio show, a lot of that, you know, some of some of that was uh, sent to us, and some of it, you know, we bought for our collection. But when I w- I did my electronic music radio show for 16 years, mm-hmm. I would back all those up to CDs, so I didn't have to take the original, you know, vinyl to to the I radio feel station. Bad and... for everyone who's backed stuff up to CDs. I'm like, by the way, yeah. the shelf life on a CD is about six years. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, mine all still work though, but I took care of them. Uh, but the, the, the rub a magnet brands... on that CD, see what happens. <laughs> oh yeah, no, but people just don't take care of them. It has nothing you know, to do with that. They um, burnt yeah. CDs rot because of the media they're pushed on. Oh yeah, no, I'm aware of that, Vin. I've done thousands of them. Um, <laughs> um, but but certain brands were better at archival than others. Oh, and so they're definitely archival grade. Yeah, physics physics gonna physics. Oh, I know. It's just like cassette tape. The the ferrites, you know, wear out. Um, Laser disc. Ooh. Well, you see, this is the difference, yeah. though. Like something that you burned at home versus something that's been pressed. A press CD is probably gonna last until the heat death yes. of the universe. Yes. It's the burnt. The burnt CDs won't last as long, but the press CDs will have a better f- shelf life. I'm still playing CDs that are from the '90s. So. Oh yeah. Because you get a, a printed metallic layer versus a layer of die exactly Y'all. sitting between but something things, right at home but yeah so earlier then what i was saying is that i i tried to buy the most expensive like the the higher end uh, sony's that have like double layer and those ones have held up really well um they were actually truly archival they'd cost they'd be more expensive and that's what i, I would put my animation on well that's, that's good like you might get like to... um <laughs> two decades out of those yeah yeah <laughs> No, uh, they're still working. I mean, you might so... get two decades out of a light scribe TD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah, but but most of the average, like the Memorex discs and stuff. I never those had are, a light you know, scribe. Um, some of the archival stuff that I would see used as backups were the um, Kodak made an archival series, and um, who else? They were ridiculously expensive. Um, they were like granite or stone something in the name, and it wasn't stone, but um, they were something like a hundred and something dollars a disc. But yeah. they were apparently arch- I wouldn't. You know what's really archival for whatever reason? Backup tapes. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, those are good too. Yeah, the Sony ones were were twenty bucks, and back in nine in the nineties, that was quite a bit. <laughs> That's not too bad. Yeah. But those were those still work pretty good, and um, that's what I put my most valuable information on. But I've since backed that up all to you know hard drives and cloud and whatnot. But the computer shop uh, where I grew up had a um, Lightscribe drive, and whenever I was there, and they started burning something on it, it's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, it's that okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can you can smell it. That's what I used. I used the burning for my plastic. Wedding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used the light scribe disc for my wedding because I I put the picture of me and Steve on the disc and then gave them to people. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> oh God, I had so much footage from our wedding because you know, artists and techies. So. 
I have so many pictures that I haven't even, I haven't even seen them all. I have thousands of pictures from my wedding. So did light scribe just not use like a universal API to tie into that? Or was it like, I know I have a light scribe drive, not because I bought yeah, one you can, intentionally. You can... It was like, no, what light scribe? And I was like, oh, look, that's just like the dual layer DVD burner. It'll never get used for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Admittedly, yeah. I burned a lot of uh, dual layer DVDs. I burned like, one out of, out of principle because <laughs> I went to the store to buy a dual layer disc, which was like $16, $17 for yeah. one. I was like, man, I can buy a spindle of regular <laughs> 4. Point, when was it? 4.7 yet? 4.6? Uh, 4.7 single yeah. layer yeah for the price of one of those man mm. it's like nah yeah no i had yeah it was when i started to like convert all of my game library into uh digital media mm -hmm. but the hard drive on my laptop was like 80 gigs so i didn't have a lot of room <laughs> So yeah, no. Oh, dual layer DVDs. Oh, my laptop drive can burn those. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no. I have a bunch of ISOs just burned onto uh, dual layer DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. I, what was it about two, probably two or three years ago? I mean, like everyone. I mean, I had my backup of CDs and DVDs, and I'm like, I got all this, and I looked at it, and I'm like, I'll never use anything on these. I junked them a couple hundred. <laughs> I did, because there's, yeah, nowadays, there's nothing on here that I can't get. <laughs> and if the internet goes yeah. down, you know what? We get bigger problems. I don't think the value of my backed up disc and it's like, yeah, no, I'll be fighting off zombies. <laughs> it'll, it'll turn out that'll be the only thing that'll repel zombies. <laughs> burn CDs. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I still have a lot I have to go through to um, do some more backups because I have so many. Because it's all my animation assets and everything from back in the day. And I've been slowly getting those backed up to cloud. I'm talking about the cloud. I mean, you could buy. Dude, they make. I mean, they're reason. I'm not going to say like they're not commodity cheap, but you can get a terabyte oh, yeah, thumb yeah. drive now. Well, I back up in three locations of everything. That's that that that's as an animator, you you do three backups of everything. Because we do a standard uh, practice for yeah. one at home, one in the cloud, and one offsite. Exactly, and yeah. that's what I do. <laughs> they don't have anything. Do you have anything, Pedro, that that would wreck you if like you lost it, data wise? No, no. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I'm i I'm pretty creation. sure Nori would be cross at me if I lost our pictures, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I have those backed up everywhere <laughs> Well, that's always kind of interesting because you can get reliant on like Google Photos and stuff like that account you can just poof. Yeah, no recourse. Yeah, I love Google Photos. It's wonderful. It's good to save internet photos. That's that's my Reddit drive. I'm like, that's oh, a funny picture I found on Reddit. I want to save it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Key pass database. Yeah. Yeah, no, I have my uh, password database uh, backed up between Chrome and Firefox. So if one of them dies, I have a backup. <laughs> I started using. Um, one of the uh, keep. What is it called? I got tired of using Google Authenticator because Authy. That's what I'm using. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... for the MFA bits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. Because mm -hmm. you just install that once, and it pretty much keeps track of. I mean, not pretty much. I mean, it keeps access to all the two-factor on all your mobile mm -hmm. devices, all your browsers. There's no more, oh, let's go find that device with that one plugged into Google Authenticator. Yeah, no, I, uh, when I changed my phone, I basically recreated all of the um, QR codes and mm -hmm. I took a screenshot of all of them. Mm. And they live somewhere on my Google Drive. <laughs> 
Mm. Well, yeah. two of yeah, my Google I, Drives. I, I, I do that too, Pedro, with all my <laughs> I take a passwords. screenshot, and then if I need to redo that, it's like, just go, bloop, there we go. Tick, 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 tick. There. <laughs> and there's a ton of passwords that are just backed up with Google. Again, if that account goes down, I'm like, ooh, that's going to be a fun day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been... Backing up everything from Google to other services as well. I wouldn't expect anything less of you, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> I've got, you know, yeah. I've got actually unlimited storage on AWS, too. So, oh, I do, um... too. I just got to write him a check. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how much you yeah, want? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to 2FA your email nowadays. <laughs> mm -hmm. Email, email, DNS, hosting, all of our Amazon stuff. Um, all of the really important stuff. Like yeah. my Steam account. There's 1,200 games on that Steam account. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> bank accounts and all that fun stuff, man. I yeah. Mean. Oh, uh, bank accounts. Uh, Physical security on that one. <laughs> ah, there you go. Get a little rotative one. <laughs> Token generator. <Yep. laughs> Those are nice, man. What do you say? Um, aspire in your life to find someone who pays you, a, a, cares as much about you as Google does when you sign in with a new device. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you sign in on a new device, like say... You got yourself a laptop and you log into Firefox and then you sign into your uh, your Google account and your phone, your other phone, mm. your tablet, your Chromebook, everything lights up. It's like, oh, yeah, it's great. You're like, there's that. It's like, what? oh, that's where that thing is. OK. <laughs> yeah. <at> <laughs> I occasionally, I'll, you know, go back and look at all the Google uh, devices that I have just so I can remember. <laughs> there's so many. Oh, uh... That's well, Google's <laughs> That's a got thing. the good thing. I mean, it's easy enough to do when you just put the yeah. your mobile device will light up and it's like, hey, you just signed in. I love their two-factor. Yes, great. and you just hit yes. That's it. Yeah. Don't, don't mess with it. IMAP. I use IMAP for everything. What are you going to get inside IMAP, Scott? Childhood trauma. <laughs> I do work in a place where we rely on Exchange a lot. I, I use so, IMAP with Gmail, Gmail exclusively. Yeah. 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 Same here. Same here, Ben. Same here, Scott. Yeah, I have three Gmail accounts set on my Thunderbird. Thunderbird. So, yeah, yeah, it's all IMAP. It's all IMAP. <laughs> yeah. I don't use Pop because I violently just randomly delete things when my mailbox yeah. gets too full, yes. and I like knowing that there's copy B. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because the only. Th not the only time. Every time I've just wiped out, really cleaned out an inbox, two or three <laughs> weeks later, a month later, that situation comes up of like, where? Oh, no. I had the information I needed, and I no longer do. Oh, yeah. I don't mess yeah, with the exchange. Yeah, exchange is passable if it's working. The moment it breaks, it's like, aren't we paying Microsoft to support this? Nah. Yeah. Can you call them? Live please? a little. <laughs> oh man all right so um there's a focus rate so if i stop at ebay stop nice raspberry <laughs> yeah, yeah no ebay e e ebay is a bit of a rabbit hole for me my patience and my list, I get like a legitimate, like itemized list, you know, from notifications, the chunk yeah. of the email every morning from all the stuff that I have saved searches on. And that doesn't do me any good. It's not the saved searches. It's just like, ooh, I might get at that at some point and I watch it. And it's like, ooh, the time is about to run out. Go buy it. Like, I they might put it back up at a cheaper price. Mm, usually, I <laughs> I wait until the like there's the legitimate deal. Mm -hmm. Like if there's the deal, I'm not going to like if you're looking for um like Intel like 3Com. 
not three gum store tag. Mm. Buy them off eBay. They're about ten dollars cheaper, and they're directly from the company, and they ship them from their Amazon warehouse. Yeah, but yeah, a good deal. Like this interface I'm looking for, I'm not going to pay four hundred bucks. I could buy one right now for four hundred bucks. Now, if you try to buy one new old stock, they're about a thousand dollars. I personally don't want to buy something that's been a box for nineteen years. <laughs> I mean, you might be picking cardboard out of the faders for a while, but... <laughs> it's something you're, you're immediately going to have to pull apart and fix, so... I don't know. I'll eventually pick one up if I find someone willing to part with one at a reasonable price, because I'm not spending $400 on something I know will need work. Alright, mm -hmm. uh... We're mm -hmm. good. What are you doing the rest of the day, Jill? You got a party going on? Oh, God. What are you going to do with your bucket well, collection? I've got a... Yeah, I've got a still take care of the bathrooms and I ha we had some damage <laughs> I still gotta take care of that and I had all my clothes in the master bath when it flooded um, my laundry and so I have to wash all that stuff again And oh no 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 no, no. See, I, you just gotta let me imagine that it's just stacked with clothes it's like, there's a little uh -huh. pad <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> Don't let it get ah, like that, go. Steve. There's all the retweets. That's that's <laughs> Steve's room, not mine. The bathroom? <laughs> no, no, no. The path, the room with the path in it. That's his his front room, his his collector's room. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be cute when it falls over on him, and you're not gonna be able to help him. You're, actually, yes. you're, you're gonna have to call the fire department. They're like, oh no. Yes. <laughs> Um, Pedro, do you got anything fun and exciting for the people? Not really. I was hoping to at least uh, have the uh, Steam box up and running today, but no, nope, the power supply I have is a bit too thick on the mm. connector, so. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. I mean, d don't be afraid to rewire stuff. <laughs> oh, and Pedro, speaking of Star Trek, those are the what I use their um, Molex splitters exclusively. They work very well. So you can just get them on Amazon. But those, yeah, those have no, if I could well. go without Molex, I'm happy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's the one connector inside a computer in 2020 that I still don't trust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll give you that. Wait, let me see. Do, do you really call that? Yeah, on the power side, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't think of... There's got to be more untrustworthy connectors, though. I'm going over a motherboard mm. right now. I got some weird connectors on this motherboard, too. I don't know if I can... Mm. I have an open spot to apply a JTAG on this motherboard, so... Yeah. <laughs> there are a couple of motherboards... That, that Chinese motherboard that's in El Chipo, mm -hmm. it's labeled JTAG. Yeah. <laughs> this one's got a couple of extra switches for my LN2 overclocking when I get around to that. Yeah. <laughs> That'll never happen, kids. This box has never even been overclocked. <laughs> All right. That's cool. I'm going to go make a show. It is Wednesday. I want everyone to have a beautiful party afternoon. Mm hmm. And, uh. Yay! Get into some trouble. Try, out, try to stay out of trouble. Remember, if you go drinking on a Thursday, you have to. Pay for it on Friday. <laughs> Life pro tips from old man Van. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sound off in Discord. Poke Jill, poke Van. Let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> we love you.